before I start, good evening one and all present over here. The task of introducing our resource person and speaker is a great privilege for me. I know this one is difficult, but the thought that he is a man of virtue and simplicity, I feel elated to introduce him to everyone. After all, he is a living inspiration to many students and for me as well. He has completed MA MPhil in philosophy from University of Delhi. He obtained his PhD from Sambalpur University and his area of research was an analytical approach to the concept of reality. He has authored 13 books and with three more on route. He has also published around 25 articles in state and national level journals. He is a regular participant of all Odessa Philosophy Association and also a life member of Indian Philosophical Congress. His career has taken him through more than 20 years of study, research, teaching and administration. He had joined Odisha Education Service in the year 1999 and his first posting was in Gangadhar Meher College, Sambalpur. Currently, he is posted at Niranjan Government Women's College, Aska, Ganjam. I have the great pleasure of introducing Dr. K. Om Narayan Rao, sir, Assistant Professor and HOD of Logic and Philosophy. Resource first speaker. We indeed glad, sir, to have you in this evening and accepting our proposal. Thank you and welcome, sir. I would like to request Dr. Rao, sir, to deliver his talk. Over to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, madam. Thank you, sir, madam. Am I audible? Am I audible? Am I audible? Okay, okay. Good evening and okay, okay. good evening and namaskar, everybody. Respected Principal Madam, Dr. Subrata Ubanga, IQAC Coordinator, Dr. Prashanta Bhavia, convener of this webinar, Ms. Tapaswini Mahali, Organizing Secretary Mahasudha Pandey, and uh, member of this organizing committee, Ranjita, Mrs. Ranjita Mahapatra. And I see many faces from the fraternity of philosophy. Uh, so uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a privilege for me for being invited to uh, the Department of uh, Home Science. I'm a man of philosophy. Let's see where I stand, as uh, the principal madam has pointed out. A man of philosophy being called to the Department of Home Science. Let's see how uh, things progress. Okay. So actually, uh, the paper, or rather, uh, I'll be delivering uh, a lecture under the title Home Theory of Women Empowerment. Actually, this coinage, Home Theory, is, I say, I say with a strong conviction that is, this coinage is quite original to me. I have coined this, but how far I justify this? It's a matter of time. In this lecture, I propose, as I said, a theory of human empowerment, which I call home theory. The word empowerment usually clubbed with women seems to suggest that either women are weak or some defect lies in women or some defect lies in our perception of women. So when we say empowerment, club with women, we we'll come across three alternatives. Number one, whether women are weak. Number two, whether some sort of defect lies in women. Number three, 
some defect lies in our perception of home. So let us look into these three alternatives. Going with the first one, I say, women are not weak for the reason that they have enormous strength, determination, patience, adaptability, willpower, and a challenging mindset. With the second alternative, I say, there lies no defect in women, since women are the greatest and the most beautiful creations of God. So, we come up with the third alternative, finally, that so the defect lies in our perception and treatment of women. I say, women have a, a very great potential. They can work hard, think independently, judge effectively, live fearlessly, and can also do nearly all that that we normally feel that uh, men alone can do. But the problem lies with the fact that uh, uh, that man carry on a mind that given the freedom to women, the women will excel in different spheres and walks of life and they would be competing men in different stages and that is not acceptable to a male dominated society here lies the whole thing for the human societies in general both in the east and the west <laughs> fail to recognize is that the differences between men and women is purely biological and all other differences and distinctions about which much we discuss and debate are all the impositions of the patriarchal domination. There is, of course, a strong historical background to this patriarchal domination <laughs> Anisha Hatta, please uh, if you can uh, mute yourself that would be better because that would be disturbing Anisha Hatta, please mute yourself there is a, definitely I said uh, a strong historical background to the patriarchal domination and of research in this direction or a serious study will reveal the circumstances under which the women are put to subjugation right from the beginning of the child's life the behavioral pattern towards the child the family and the society much depends on the gender or the sex of the child as a male child there is much encouragement in the family and opportunities are created for the child, for the male child, I see, underline, for the male child to grow into a successful man. But as a girl child, she is made to knock for her own opportunities. Well, this may not be universally true. She is not only really not given the opportunity the way the male counterpart in the family is given or the male children in the family are given well the things are changing I don't uh, discard that but the change is only marginal a lot of things have to be done from the household work to education partiality is maintained and a girl child is tutored to exercise control over her mind and body. Though again this may not be universally true, there may be variations from family to family, from case to case, from society to society, but a boy is allowed to grow freely as 
he seemed to be the one who can meet the challenges uh, facing the family, society and the nation. A large section of people believe that women are incapable of disposing various tasks of importance and this gives men an upper hand in controlling the helm of the class both in the private and public lives. The principle of stay at home is applied to women and though they have jobs outside home like men, yet they are expected to do the household work. Again, though women have all capability to excel and move forward, yet they are asked to stop or look back for the sake of the family or the, fam or the husband or the children or the elderly people in the family or some for, or, uh, for some other reason. They are put to such a degree of subjugation that an element of fear arises in them from some known or unknown point. This is quite dangerous. And many women are seen to suffer from fear psychology. Especially, I say you, during the carrying stage, the women, many women carry the fear psychology. What, the, what, what is the psychology? One is the risk of delivery. Number two, the risk involved in the comments of the elderly people and other people in the family. What? Whether she is going to deliver a male child or a female child. So that is again a great mental blockade that most of the women suffer. Honestly speaking, in many of the families, the birth of a female child is not welcome. So this brings in a lot of mental stress. The sort of fear of the future and fear of the future is always dangerous and it leads to anxiety and stress and most of the women suffer from this. They are out of fear anticipate, anticipate a problem even though even though they may not be a problem but still they are why because of this fear and this makes the problem that women face still more worse the human societies the human, I mean, I mean, uh, human societies at large fail to understand I say, when I say human societies, I mean uh, people both in the East and the West, that neither men nor women are superior to the other. Both are the creations of God. If you don't believe in God, at least believe that both women and men are the creations of nature, at least. But the problem is, men enjoy the privileges and the women are subjugated to an underprivileged status. The standpoints from which men are judged are so selected that these standpoints would aid and support men. And the women are tested or judged from the standpoints again so designed not to suit women but to men. There is an open bias in the way we think of men and women, either in a piecemeal or in a relation to one another. And this gives men a driver's seat and, and this puts women in the back foot. Rather, I would say that women are placed under the mercy of men. A very problematic situation. 
Now, if we look into the feminists, especially uh, the liberal feminists, the radical feminists, and the postmodern feminists, we see that the liberal feminists, I say, I say for the students, I say feminists are those who work for the advancement of women, who work for the betterment of women, who work for the cause of women. Feminists are those who want the elevation of women, who want to empower women. This is for uh, the students who don't understand what feminists are, who feminists are. So feminists are those who work for the betterment of the quality of life of women. So maybe a reference to the liberal, radical and the postmodern feminists. While the liberal feminists lay some informal and the formal rules based on which the women are discriminated, the radical feminists they blame the society for being partial to women. And they want that the women must be made free to exercise their choices, to live a better life in quality and structure. But if we look at the postmodern feminists, they say that the level of stress and the extent of strain that the women are subjected to should be taken into account. And the problem that we see is this stress and strain that women take is morally neglected. The modern feminists say that the amount of pain that women take, the amount of stress that women take, the amount of work that the women do in the family for the sake of all the members of the family, this is not taken, morally not taken into account and this being the case the women feel demoralized under the patriarchal domination in the backdrop of what I have said now this is more important we should note that the discrimination between the sexes I mean the male and the female sexes starts in the individual homes or families and this discrimination in the family or the individual groups spreads to the society. In many homes, as I said, that the birth of a female child is not welcome. The various attempts at female poeticide is the greatest proof to this. Perceiving the gravity of the situation, the government has banned the pre natural sex determination and any attempt at female forticide is made a financial offense. But still, the cases of female forticide behind the curtain are sometimes reported and this shows the intensity of discrimination that this male dominated society has towards the girl child in some homes or families or societies. Adding to all this, woman is made responsible for delivering a female child by the members of the family, especially the elderly members. And I and you should underline when I say elderly members, elderly female members. They blame a woman for delivering a female child, forgetting that the women are the greatest creations of God and without women there cannot be procreation. Forgetting all this, they blame the woman for delivering a female child. But, as, but, 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 but the problem is, is the birth of a male or a female child 
is in anybody's control. The birth of a male or female child is natural creation. We cannot have a control over it. Nobody has the control over it. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Rajashri, please mute your please, please mute your mic. Rajashri. Okay, sir, continue, sir. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. These things happen when we go on in virtual meets. These things happen. Okay, now, sir. Before, before we look into this issue a bit scientifically, we see that women have X sex combination of chromosomes. And men have extra combination of chromosomes. If the X chromosome from the male counterpart combines with one of the two X chromosomes of the female counterpart in the reproduction process, a female is born. A female cannot give a Y chromosome because she doesn't have a Y chromosome. She has a duplet of X chromosomes. She can always give an X chromosome. It is only the male counterpart. Who has got a pair of who has got a pair of chromosomes in which one of the chromosomes is X and the other is Y? It is only that the male counterpart can be the Y chromosome. It is only when the Y chromosome from the male counterpart interacts with the X chromosome from the female side that a male child is born. But but nobody has the control over it. But the sad story behind all this is. A lot of irrationality hangs in the mindsets of many members within the family. That's why home as a see is an important stage of lot of irrationality that not only weakens women, that kills silently the feminine structure. Feminine mindset. The psychology in the family, I say, you is a silent killer. We need to come out of this. A sort of remedy is required to come out of this attitude. The elderly people, I say, should be made to realize the amount of pain that the daughter lost carry for no fault on their part. Let, 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 let the mother-in-law think for a while. I am going to this issue. Let the mother-in-law think for a while. If her daughter is married in some other house and if she delivers a female child, you have no problem, you have no issue. Only when your daughter-in-law delivers a female child, you have an issue. Why this is going to be reality? Why this sort of double standards? The elderly members, I say, you should need to should be made to realize that daughter-in-laws, that the daughter-in-laws are the daughters in disguise, and they need to be given much love and affection like their own daughters. And one more thing, let me add, that it is these daughter-in-laws. If you give them love, if you give them care, if you support them, if you show your affection. They will return back their love, their affection with much more intensity during their old days. But many families, but in many families, there is no understanding of this. Let me tell you one more thing: that women are greatest enemies of women. They cannot see a woman side by growing up. Why not? Even a daughter-in-law in the family. So this sort of attitude should be washed away, and we should think of an attitude of care and share. Now a newly wedded bride has entered into the family, and if she has all support and love, affection in the family. She will be nurtured in such a manner. She will have all affection for the family. 
but if the torture begins from day one slowly a mindset will develop where a day will come when sea will return back there is a saying even when a dog has his day so in the level of home i say lot of discrimination lot of discriminatory attitude is carried on we need to come out of it if you want to empower a woman we need to empower women from the level of individual families that is what is greatly needed by the individual home or family you should feel yourself as a unit and come up to a son in a manner that there is a sense of fulfillment and completeness in the family and also there needs a sense of flexibility adaptiveness and self made conflict resolution mechanism build bridges and make us to come out of the rough patches of time and one more thing a proper understanding between the couples in the family is also very important the understanding between the couples spreads a message within the family to other members in the family that they need to respect each other's emotions and sentiments for a for a beautiful coexistence and intimate relationship of love and friendship in the family now here two words come to my mind one is war hero h e r o hero if you look into this word it has four letters h e r o remove h e r her the feminine part in the hero in hero we have four letters h e r o the first three letters is h e r referring to a feminine as remove h e r her what is left is o what o symbolizes o symbolizes a big zero so what does it imply a hero without her is a big zero this is how the feminine aspect is so important similarly if i look into the word woman w o m a n i see the word man hidden if the man is struck off woman is just a who she is incomplete so a woman requires her man badly requires her man so man and woman they should not be discriminated they should not be taken apart they are the two strands of one and the same thing they are the two different strands but they together constitute one and the same strand so that is the realization that is required in all families both the both of them are equal partners now some feminists some 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 sometimes some, some, some days back i was uh, looking into uh, a whatsapp message where some uh, thinker a researcher that uh, why do women claim uh, equal status with men why do they claim equal status with men they say women are not uh, right in, uh, in claiming that status why do they claim such status they have a greater status than men women have a greater status than men don't claim for you equal status women have those capabilities those inherent capabilities which men do not have 
So, this sort of understanding should also be brought into the picture. Wherein should, wherein, wherein that, 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 this would enable us to make us come out of a nutshell wherein the conventional and age old things are taken into account wherein patriarchal domination is propagated and women are put to subjugation. We should come out of this. And any respect for women outside must begin from the home itself. If the if a, if a, if a, if a woman is not given respect, if she is not treated well in the family, how can you expect that she will be treated well outside the family? Where you are living, you are not respected. How come you think of respect outside the family? Because psychologically, the woman get weak, and with that weak psychology, if they move out, they move with a sense of fear and fall prey to various negative forces. We need to be careful with this. We need to empower women at the level of homes. As when I say women, I mean the entire female sex. Maybe a small child, a female child, or maybe a grown up child, or maybe a woman in the family, elderly or of any age. We need to respect them. We need to empower them. We should not discriminate that you are a weaker sex. No. They can substitute a greater success, a stronger success, the primary success. So, so, talking of the issue of empowerment, empowerment does not mean adding wings to women. I repeat, empowerment does not mean adding wings to women. Rather, it means not to cut the wings that they already have. Actually, we are subjugating women. It is not that women are weak. No. Women are not weak at all. We are subjugating them. We are applying pressure on them. And in the process, we are making them weak. Intentionally, I say intentionally, we are making them weak. So, please take a note of, note of this. Empowerment of women does not mean adding something to women, giving something to women. No, they don't want anything. Just don't cut them off. Let allow them to grow freely, open. They are also individuals, human beings. They are also the creations of God. Why should they survive with all pressure in the family? They have water potential. And this reminds me of the historical past where we have women like Rani Lakshmi Bai or say uh, 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 Rani uh, Padmini and many others, even in the modern times. They have a lot of potential. What is required is encouragement, support, love, attraction. Much like the male counterparts in the family. So that they will be able to participate in the affairs, the various affairs at the individual uh, level of homes or outside the home in various spheres and walks of life in the society or the nation. Their participation in various levels not only bring them to the mainstream but also reduces lot of pressure on men and and it will <laughs> help him bridging a gap between the male and the uh, female sense that we think of having a gap. 
society has created a gap. The, the individual homes have created a gap. We should bridge this gap and we should bring both the opposite sexes to a level of understanding, cooperation, and more importantly, to have a sense of fulfillment and joy. If we talk of empowerment, the very act of making a girl physically and mentally strong, let me repeat it, making a girl child physically and uh, physically and mentally strong should begin at the level of individual homes. But it is surprising to see in a number of cases that a girl child is not safe in her own home. She is not safe in her own home. What could speak of her safety outside? When she is not safe in her own home, we can talk of safety outside. Being dejected and depressed of the situation in home, she carries the depression outside too and finds herself in a weaker lot, even though she has all the potentialities to excel and do better, even now. So something needs to be done at the level of at the level of individual homes, so that a girl child is made to grow at par with the male child. This requires a change in mindset. The things in the family, when I say family, I mean individual homes, need to be judged not by the gender, but by the child's attitude to life and its problems. This can bring a balance between the senses. Now, it is shocking to see that even from a moral standpoint, women are undervalued as compared to men. I say even from a moral standpoint, women are undervalued. It gives little importance and shows less concern for women's problems and rights. The moralists even dismiss the women's problems linked with the household affairs like cooking, cleaning, caring the children, and the elders or looking into various other activities in the family or home as morally uninteresting and unimportant. You see the position. And the masculine traits of independence, autonomy, freedom, aggression, defense are overvalued over the feminine traits of dependence. They say feminine, females are dependent. And this line of thinking has been carried on from the time immemorial. And such a line of thinking or a line of uh, say a behavioral pattern should change. And even from the standpoint of morality, a moral theory should be trained that would promote a non-discriminist, non-sexist ethical principles at the earliest that can bring both the male and the female to the standpoint of equality. There goes an age-old belief that men are lawful and they can give justice and they are of the upholder of justice and women are caring but with time a certain sort of transformation has occurred and uh, the people um, uh, assert in the modern times assert that 
that, 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 that women are also lawful and justful, but men are more lawful and just. And uh, they, in a similar way, they say men are also caring, but women are more caring, caring than men. As long as such a feeling uh, remains within us, there cannot be an equality between the sexes. There is a need of a development of an attitude of non-discrimination from the level of individual homes so that both males and females grow as lawful, justful and careful partners in the family and also in the society. It is only then we can think of a non-discriminatory pattern in the society. But this pattern should begin at the level of hope. That is very important. My concern is the hope. It is at the level of homes that we need to empower. That is my basic thesis over the entire uh, lecture. Once the importance to the female children and the woman is assured in the family, they can get enough scope to develop and grow mentally stronger. This increased mental strength will open up ways to participate and involve in various private and public affairs with much confidence. This is what is needed. And for this, the parents, the elders have a great role to play, have a, have a great role to play to really equip the girl child without any discrimination in the family. May I pay a dream in many of the families because they are much tied up with the traditions and age old customs. But things are still changing and we should appreciate the change for the betterment of the woman and the girl child in the family. Even though in some families, even though they see the changes, they half-heartedly make attempts to incorporate the changes. They will be saying, well, we are um, making our girls, or the girls in our family are very much free, but hardly they are not making them free. They are not making the girl child free. They say, well, uh, the girls in our family or the women in our family are very much free. No, but they are half-heartedly they are saying. They are saying one thing, but hardly they have a different picture. So this makes the thing still more difficult. And some sort of people require proper counsel in order to come out of such a mindset. Because half-hearted mindset is still more dangerous. The counseling is possible. Some sort of people can be refined to openly support and help the females, I mean, the female children and the females, grown-up uh, adults in the family in a direction to make them more prominent and explicit in the society. And definitely, I, I hope there is a day when the people in the family will realize that we are making our own people weak. We are making our own blood relations weak. We are making our own girl children weak. People will realize this. That is not far away. And we as thinkers, we as educationists should spread this message that if you want to see your girl child or your woman empowered, see them that whether there is no discriminatory attitude in your family or not. If you are carrying on the principle of non-discriminatory attitude, then definitely you are developing your child to grow up as a very good citizen of the society and the nation. In the recent times, I have seen, and many of you might have seen many of the students 
uh, he uh, might have seen this Amir Khan star film Dangal. Many of you might have seen this picture, wherein the character of Mahavir Prashad Pogat and his two daughters, uh, Geeta Pogat and uh, Babita Pogat, convey a strong message as to how one's hard work and determination can lift one's standards even of women to emerge not only as people with a strong mindset but as citizens who can, who can bring a lot of name and fame to the nation. This requires a lot of support and mindset to face the challenges irrespective of the nature of the nature intensity of the challenges like that we see in the character of Mahavir uh, Prashad Kote. Let me let me remind you of the story. Mahavir Prashad Kote wanted his two daughters to grow up into wrestlers, wrestlers, usti, usti, that would say uh, Odia. But being both of the both of his children being girls, he was never sad. Rather, he wanted that no, even these girls will one day get a gold medal, an international medal for the family, for the for the nation, and make the entire family, the entire nation proud. He molded both the daughters in such a way. The people in the society and even the family members were very, very much critical of what Mahavir Prashad Pogat is doing. None of them understood him, neither the society nor his own family members understood him. Even Gita and Babita were not happy with this with the, uh, with the father. They were even they were not happy with the father. Why? Because they were asked to fight with the male counterpart. They are asked to fight with males because there were, there were there were no female wrestlers, so they had to fight in order to practice for the matches. They had to fight with the males, and this was this great message to the society, a conservative society. How can a female child fight with a male child? But Mahavir Prashad did not care for any reaction whatsoever from any quarter. And allowed her, his, both the daughters to fight, fight, and fight. And the girls, if they can fight, if they could fight with the male counterparts, they were so successful in fighting in the international levels that they brought laurels to the nation. The eldest daughter, Gita Polgat, as I believe, won the gold medal for the nation. So this is how the girls in the family can be empowered. This great social message. If a father can empower a girl in the family to such an extent, why not we? I'm not talking to take that much of pressure to build your girl child to that level. Well, we may not. We are not Mahavir Prashad Kobit. At least as human beings, we should carry a sense of respect, a sense of feeling the pain of the female child in the family when we carry on an attitude of discrimination. In many families, I see if a girl child wants to eat something that is cooked by the mother, the mother says, e bhai khai ni para, to kindi khai do. What does that mean? Is he not a human being? Huh? Is he not a human being? Didn't you give birth to that child? She is feeling to eat, then what is the issue with you? Why should the male child come, then the female child will be given the food? And even in many families I see, unless and until the, the male counterpart arrives, the female has to wait for the male counterpart to arrive, then she will start her food. What is the what is the issue? Well, I say well, well, one positive side I can see is well, 
both will sit together have some 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 uh, some some words of love and respect and they eat together if that is there then it is fine sit together have some words of love some sort of respect some sort of feelings for each other have the food well that is very fine either of the sexes may wait for any any much time i don't have any problem but if you say that no unless and until the male counterpart has not taken food the females cannot take in many families i see it this is not a good thing it is not a good thing it is not a good sign we have to come out of this so that's why i say the home is the building ground is the making ground of the females we are making our females weaker and weaker in our own family we have to take out we have take them out of that situation we have to make them strong we have to make them feel strong so that they can compete outside they can grow they can they can move outside with confidence if they have made so weak in the family how can you think that they will go with a stronger note to face the outside world now uh, coming back to poet i mean mahavir prachat poet the success story that he has written so he taken as an example to elevate the girl child to make home a center for women and power i say home is the center of women and power and empowerment if at all we want to attack with girls or the females it should begin from the homes if we see the female counterparts equal what is the problem what is the issue let us see what sort of uh, good thing that we derive if you subjugate women in the family does it contribute to any good if we well suppose we carry on the principle of subjugation of women does it lead to anything does it contribute to any good why do you take as a strand parallel to you why don't you take hand in hand a female child or a female in the family why do you take a female as to obey and respect you the male counterpart why not her body is also hard so these are the issues that we need to see into in our own individual homes but soon there will be realization in the family that women are an important sex there it would arise a paradigm shift in the entire course of events in the family and once there is a paradigm shift in the family you see that family will grow will excel and the members in the family will find themselves to play greater roles in the society and the nation those who feel empowered in the family at At, at, at the level of homes, but definitely feel empowered outside and would assert themselves with great confidence in dealing with various affairs in the public life. The more is the participation of women in the public life, the more would be the moral boost to women, especially to the women who are confined to the four walls. of the individual homes the mindset is slowly changing and we need this change to continue to grow on so that the distinction between men and women are given away the traditional boundaries are snatched away and new definitions are created to free women and involve them in decision making and above all treat them well with a deep realization that no one has the right to discriminate women 
and if they do then that would be a great loss to their own selves what benefit you will get if you make a female child in your family weak if you make a female child or a female in your family weak that is going to boomerang you and you will be the most seriously affected by that attitude so come out of that treat everybody equal no discrimination in the family so that is the mindset maybe we have a very softer pure and refined homes and i say to the last part i say looking into all these things that i have asserted let me uh, uh, a few uh, take a few lines from what i have said it uh, is a, uh, a clear signal or say of non discrimination or a feeling of sense of equality would bring about a sense of happiness between both the sexes right in the family the male and the male counterparts will have a sense of happiness and that would contribute to joy and peace in the family and this hopefully would bring in positive changes in the structure of the society because the woman who is empowered the woman who is having a lot of respect lot of love in the family is not the same woman who was discriminated the woman with love respect in the family can come to the public life with all confidence and she can carry on the public works with much more confidence you see there are provisions made by the government that ensures women rights tries to safeguard and protect women the government machinery is fully committed in the direction of uh, the progress of women in different walks of life but just the government action would not make the women strong it is only when we rise from the home front that things can be incorporated in the society once there is a change in the mindset in the individual homes that not only cares and respects the female sex but also empowers them in such a way that they are able to face the challenges in the outside world with much confidence and strength without i say without feeling a sense of inferiority without feeling a sense of inferiority vis a vis the opposite sex then this would be a greatest achievement in the lives of women if such a thing is done then the word empowerment that i started with that i linked with women would really be a redundant this word empowerment would become a redundant it would become useless would become of no use because women then would need power potentiality and capability at par with men so then there would be no issue of adding empowerment empowerment with women so there is no need of empowerment i say women are already empowered women are already empowered by nature what we can empower we cannot empower any but women are naturally empowered the only thing is we should not cut them short we should not barricade them we should not discriminate them we should not curtail their freedom we should give them their freedom even the freedom we also say that we have a responsibility then you see that the greatest creations on this earth will flower and would make the lives of everybody in the level of homes in the level of the society and in and at the level of the globe so beautiful and this would justify a beautiful creation of god thank you everybody for uh, your patient hearing thank you everybody
Thank you. Can I come up with a question, sir? Hello. Hello, hello, uh, Madam Tapaswini. Can I have a question yes, for the resource person, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely, sir. Om, sir. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Om, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Carry on, carry on. Basi, sir, would you ask me a question, sir? Uh, Dr. Namita, Rao. Can you mute your uh -huh. mic? Namita, madam, please mute your mic. Okay. Dr. Rao, let me congratulate you on, on the fabulous speech that you presented. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Thank you very much, sir, for all that you said. In fact, please allow me to speak a couple of sentences where I agree with you before I go to a point where exactly I have a query, sir. Dr. Rao, I am in complete agreement with your way of sensitizing homes it is the home front which can really empower women that i guess was the core of your speech and i absolutely agree and hats up to the way you presented it but i think you said in your presentation that at home front in the families we need to sensitize ourselves the male and the female members of a family at the home front to be respectful towards, to be unprejudiced towards, to be undiscriminatory towards women. And that probably will pave the way for women empowerment. That's great indeed. Now, what I really admire about your presentation is the way you describe the problem. And also, your prescription, home theory of women empowerment. But what, where I have a query or I have a point of disagreement, or maybe I couldn't get you right, therefore I'll seek a clarification from you, sir. Why is it that the families have not been able to come up with this role? What exactly has gone wrong? When you are addressing a webinar to the educated people, to the students, to the teachers, to the researchers like this, it's a wonderful platform. Let's think about it, sir. I want yes. your opinion on this. Could you please diagnose the disease? Why is it that you said, let me sir, just, just two more sentences and I'll finish my question. Just two more sentences. You describe the disease well, but I'm afraid uh, there is a little more diagnosis required for this disease, for this problem that women discrimination, women exploitation, and all these related things. Now, why is it that the families are not being able to come up with them? I and this is something which has started in India officially with the abolition of Sati by Raja Ramon Roy, if you remember. I mean, it's, it's almost 200 years old. But even in India today, let's talk about a country. Well, like, uh, like you rightly said, Indian state, Indian government is gender neutral. Right since 15th August 1947, our constitution guarantees equality, non-discriminatory attitude towards men and women. That's there. But things are not changing the way they should. Will you please focus on, with your uh, perspective, this problem, why is it that the families are not really coming up, despite the fact that many have come up, where is the stumbling block actually? How can we change the attitude that you talk about? It's fine to say that let's change the attitude, but how? why don't we? What's really stopping us? Will you please speak on that, sir? Thank you very much. Very nice, please, go ahead, sir. Very nice, very nice, very nice, very nice observation made by you, Dr. Pati. Thank you, thank you, Pati, sir. Welcome. Thank you, sir. To this, let me uh, say two to three things. Why is the birth of a female child not welcome? One is the prevalent dowry system. The prevalent dowry system, number one. Number two, some sort of insult occurs to a male, to a male child 
there is, I mean, there is, there is no issue. But some sort of insult occurs to you, a female child, there arises an issue. Number two. Number three, the inheritance laws, well, they are changing, but traditionally, it is believed that the male children would carry the legacy forward. The female child's female children are parayad. They have to leave the family. Even though they are born in the family, it is known that they have to send to different family. You do not know what would be the structure of the family, how she would live in that family, and we send our own children to a different family with lot of lot, lot of customary presents, with lot of dowry. And this brings a sort of mental blockade to every, 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 every family. So that's what is the mindset that we see. Because this is the thing that we have been propagating in our society. The mindset is not changing. The fear of the birth of a female child. What would happen? How could I manage our marriage? How could I manage the finances for our marriage? What would be how would be her life when she would go to a different home? So these are the various things that go on in the mind of the parents from the time the female the woman in the family conceives. This is the mindset that we have to come up. The biggest problem attached with our society is we have made the pattern that the female has to go to the male counterpart and she has to leave the rest of her life there. Why don't we think otherwise? Or why don't our society permit the transition both the ways? Why not? Why should we come out of this a unilateral movement? A female, a girl born in one family has to go to the other family, get married in another family, and she has to stay uh, her entire life there. So sorry Why to not? interrupt you on this point. So sorry to interrupt you on this point. In that case, we'd be replacing one problem with another. Now, feminists, are, you are suggesting that there should be a transition. It should not be unilateral. Okay. Well, that could be that could be a very good proposal. But in that case, we are going to replace one problem with another. I guess that's not the problem actually. The problem is with our culture, sir. The problem is not with how we feel at home. The problem is how we are made to feel at home. That is, that is a huge force. It's not about you and me. It's not about men and women. It's about an ideology. You being a professor of philosophy, sir, I was expecting you to talk about that. In fact, yes. Because when I when I saw that a philosophy professor is suggesting home theory for women empowerment, I was expecting a little philosophization. Maybe you have students in mind. But what you are saying is like like it's the problem is not exactly that. No. For example. For example, you are particular. Maybe you are talking about a particular section of society, but in most families, like your family, my family, where we are not exactly expecting dowry, or we are not burdened with the, uh, the the apprehension that we have to give dowry for our daughters. The problem is elsewhere, sir. It's it's like like you say the mindset. Now we have to look at how this mindset came into existence in the first place, and we need to hit that. It has to be hit academically. It cannot be hit politically. It cannot be hit constitutionally. As yeah. as you have rightly said, the Indian constitution, Indian government is striving towards the progress of women. That is, I'm I'm quoting your sentence, sir. Yes, I agree. Not, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree. The problem is elsewhere, sir. Yeah. The problem is with 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 patriarchy, the ideology of patriarchy, and yeah. we have to attack that. It's not just women. Thank you. I have said, I have, thank you, thank you. Dr. Rao. It is a patriarchal domination since age old, and this patriarchal domination is somehow carried on and carried on without a break 
and we have a unilateral transition and what i suggest is opening up ways and i don't think uh, it's, 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 it's one of the options that is available well you can set aside dowry as you're saying well elevated families well, you don't uh, 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 as of as of elevated families, things have changed, much changed. And what I hit at is the families, the underprivileged families, and the female families at the middle and the lower middle and lower uh, uh, lower order families. So see the structure there, see the mindset there. So the cases of premier forticide is not coming up in the elevated classes. It is mostly coming in those underprivileged or say, say, say the lower economic classes. That's why I, I, I did hit it, that issue. And, 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 and uh, uh, when you talk of uh, philosophizing the issue, I say they need a mindset. Well, you have rightly said they need uh, an ideology on which we have to base everything, but still we cannot base everything on a strong ideology because of the division in the structures in which we live, based on the divisions in the structure of the mindsets that the people in our country or in different societies or the world as a whole they can. So based on this, there can be an ideology as, as you rightly said and I have to have pointed that this entire problem or issue lies with the patriarchal domination and the problem is uh, and the remedy is to come out of this domination. Okay, that is the only thing that I want to research. We need to come out of this patriarchal domination. So if that is possible, when both the sexes are allowed to have their position felt in the family, first at the level of family, then at the level of the society, and, 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 and then at greater and greater levels. So ideologically speaking, my concern is patriarchy as an ideology has been prevailing and it's still going on with no foreseen end. We have to end up this patriarchal system. That's why I made a transition. As I talked of a transition. Why the females should go to the male's house? Why not otherwise if they are comfortable? Or why not? Why should be such a barricade that one the female has to move to the male's house? Why such custom? Why such tradition? Why can't we move away from the tradition in order to demolish the structure of patriarchy? So that's my uh, concern. Well, Doctor uh, Rao, yes, yes, yes. Uh, in response to your answer I, uh, to, to the question of uh, the previous participant, Dr. Pati, Dr. Pati, Dr. Pati, I shall just compliment you that the mindset always goes with the social customs and social customs vary from country to country state to state society to society and the mindset of whom mindset of we people social custom of whom social custom of we people and this mindset was there mindset is changing and the mindset will change Therefore, such programs are carried on. Therefore, awareness programs, such events are taking place. So, mindset was there because of social customs. Mindset, mindset is changing from the level of a home to uh, some society and country, state. Everywhere, mindset is changing. And mindset has been changed. And mindset will be changed in future. And we are we are perceiving that change in our society. The, I have I have quoted some questions. Uh, that is also my answer. The, my question is also my answer. Now mindset has been changed. Now, yes, pa now, now, now parents prefer one child, and even that child is a female child. They welcome. Now mindset has been changed, and it has been changed because of philosophy, because of uh, because of uh, education, because of awareness. And we are, we all are doing that. Thank you. Yes, I agree with you fully. And what I was suggesting is that mindset has to change right from the level of individual goals. That is the entire 
entire entire entire, entire thing that the entire hypothesis on which i gave i have based my lecture agree the mindset agree. change at the level of individual homes agree sir i keep that is changing that's a good uh, that's a good feature and that could contribute to the development of both the sets agree sir agree sir Uh, any more questions or anybody wants uh, uh, or should I move to the chat box to answer the yes, uh, yes sir yes uh, sir yes sir do you have any questions to, to copy uh, actually Pramod Kumar Das sir uh, asked you asked you a question but he had already uh, have a conversation with you so Pramod Kumar Das sir do you have any other question no 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 my question was my answer Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And another question was from Ratnakar Gajendra, sir. Uh, she uh, asked uh, something related from mythology. Uh, if you look to the Mahabharata, we see the case of Draupadi. Whether a woman is considered as a property of the husband, please provide your remarks, sir. So uh, her question was that Ratnakar Gajendra. Okay, so going back to mythology, even a woman was put into the act of gambling in the court of the king. So the question, the concern is the woman is taken as an object, as a property. So, there, is, there was no objection in the court. Great people were there in the court. Sita Mahabhishma, Even great warriors like Arjuna was there. They all were in the silent mode. Because if you look at Bhishma, he made a pratigya known as Bhishma Pratigya that he will remain as a character protecting the king and the kingdom. He was committed to a sort of dharma that he will be protecting the kingdom and the king. When the king was silent, Bhishma was small. He did not open the mouth. Because he was committed to one dharma. Coming to Arjuna and the brothers of Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira has used, I say, Draupadi as a property. But all the brothers Silent. Why? Because they were committed to another dharma that they will not disrespect their elder brother. Because they were also committed to one dharma. That's why they are not coming up. So the tragedy took place. So the problem is. When we get committed to some sort of dharma, the problem arises. Whenever you are carrying on a certain sort of dharma, you should know the technique of coming out of dharma. It is good to speak the truth. It's a dharma itself. It's a, it's a, it's a, speaking the truth is a dharma. But if the circumstances want to speak a lie, you must go on with speaking a lie. But what has happened? Dharma Raja, Yudhishthira has used property as a property and everybody was silent. So that was a great mistake, that was a great crime against women. 
say I see it as a crime. Even in our society, we see such crimes every day. We see women being commented, women being insulted, but we saw our mom faces out of fear. Is this not happening? So that is the there lies the problem. There lies the whole issue. Thank you. Hey, madam, are you there? I see a sort of disconnection probably. I saw this sort of disconnection. The person, madam, are you there? Is that audible? Ah, you are audible. You are audible. 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 You are audible, madam. Ah, sir, sir, actually, uh, my phone was disconnected. Actually, my phone was disconnected, sir. Okay, carry on, carry on. Carry on. So, uh, I, so I request all the participants. Uh, to ask any question, if you have any question uh, for a uh, sir, home sir, so you can uh, write down your questions on chat box or just unmute your mic to ask questions. Is there any question? Is there any question from any participants? In the chat box, let me uh, see the chat box. The person, madam, you see the chat box. There are some. Well, I am reading the questions from the chat box. Uh, no, sir. There, there is no uh, questions. No, no. Some Rashmita Malik has said, "You are so is, you are so so you so easily represent the truth that the rights and freedoms of the Muslim family." Okay, thank you. Okay, see so the comment. I have any question? Let me no, see. Sir, sir, that, sir, that was a com comment. That, that was a comment. Comment, sir. comment, comment. Uh, well, Ratnakar Gajendra sir, he has said the charity should begin from uh, the level of home. Well, I have said that that we should shape ourselves uh, for the good of the female child right from the level of homes. That is what uh, he too also asserts. One more thing, it is from Akanksha Mishra. It's a big question. Let me see what she wants to say. Yes, sir. Okay. Education is the best and the only way to empower each and every child of the society. Education need not be formal one, but a character building approach. If a, but but of a uh, reference to a character building, anyone can build a strong mind in setting an unbeatable background of the child of society. Acha, okay. So she says that um, well, education would help to uh, 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 would help to empower. Woman, but at the same time, even it's not just a formal education uh, uh, would do. A sense of character building, a sense of uh, building a strong mindset. Uh, 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 in, in a woman, uh, maybe uh, a female child or a grown up adult, uh, uh, that would uh, uh, greatly help and contribute uh, uh, to the society. That's what is required. And maybe she supports my uh, message of uh, um, um, empowering, empowering uh, women from uh, from the level of home. Well, my entire lecture, as I said to you earlier, is directed, is concentrated on the basic hypothesis that if we want to see women empowered, we should start empowering women, maybe a girl child or a grown-up adult child, or say. A grown-up adult, or say, uh, 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 or, or a woman in the family, uh, we need to respect her rights. You see, uh, we need to uh, uh, care her. We need to respect her. We need to um, uh, take her opinion into account. We need to see her with a sense of respect and dignity, and we should involve her in all decision-making process. And that would uh, uh, greatly contribute in building a stronger mindset in. Uh, 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 Mindset in females uh, in the family, and uh, taking uh, from what uh, Dr. Pati has said, well, uh, as an ideology, we should uh, uh, grow up with the um, uh, point of abolishing this patriarchal domination. And if we are really successful in abolishing this patriarchal domination at the level of homes, 
that could be that could define a great future for women. And hope to see such a good future. And things are slowly changing, as Dr. Pramod Das said. Things are changing, the mindset is changing. And let us hope for a uh, 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 revision in uh, how to think of women. Uh, uh, a sort of revision how we take women into account. Uh, think of uh, 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 before uh, accepting anything negative based on should be should come out of conservative attitude of confined women to the poor goals of the family. You should see them growing, developing right from the individual. If we do this, we will be great future. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. I hope. Uh, yes, sir. Is that I am audible, sir? No, you are audible. You are audible. Uh, I hope, sir. Uh, these answers, uh, questions uh, are asked by the participants. It looks like we have covered all our questions, sir. Still, I am asking all the participants. Is there any question? Is there any question you want to ask the resource person? You can type in the chat box or you can just unmute your mic and ask questions. I should thank I, think uh, so. we just I, I, should, I, I should thank Dr. Devasipati uh, and Dr. Pramod uh, Kumar Das for making observations and making and allowing me to think on this issue in a greater light. Thank you both of you, sir. And thank you all participants for for, for listening to me over a period of say one and a half hours. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Definitely, definitely, sir. Uh, so, so finally, we have come to the end of our webinar. Uh, sir, I would like to take two minutes. Uh, can I? May I, sir? Ah, definitely, definitely, definitely. So with that, uh, so with that, uh, we will go ahead uh, to the end of our webinar. I would like to express some of the uh, my um, what we call my uh, points that uh, it's high time what the what Om sir had had said that the uh, women are uh, the greatest strength, and it's high time that. We should uh, oh. change our mindset and treat every person as human being instead of recognizing them through their gender and discriminating them accordingly. So your interpretation of her, her referring to feminism and O and O without her is a zero was an amazing interpretation. The second interpretation that women requires women that W O and when we sub separate W O, it uh, it uh, changes to men. That means men requires a, a woman requires a man. She that means she is incomplete without a man. That means man and woman should not be discriminated. They are just like two sides of the coin. So with that, I would like our faculty member Ranjita Mahapatra, madam. Purpose a vote of thanks. Ranjita, madam, over to you. Thank you, Tapashwani, madam. Good evening, all. It will both things come to an end in life, so each the webinar. First of all, I would like to thank Almighty God for making today's webinar a great success. On behalf of the entire fraternity of Kuntara Kumari Sagar Women's College, organizing committee and all students. I would like to extend my heartiest gratitude to our honorable resource person, Dr. K. Om Narayan Rao sir, for his kind presence in the webinar. Thank you sir for enlightening us with your inspiring and motivating words. I am pretty sure the precious knowledge that Dr. Rao sir gives us will definitely help us in our future. Once again, I would like to thank Dr. Rao Sar for taking out time from their busy schedule and enlightening us with the knowledge. Wholeheartedly, 
आई मोस्ट थैंक टू आवर रिवर्स प्रिंसिपल मैडम डॉक्टर सुब्रता देवंगना फॉर दिस सपोर्ट इन गाइडेंस फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग दिस वेबिनार I also show my special regards to Dr. Prasant Devuria Sar, Assistant Professor in Mathematics and IQSC Coordinator for his support. I would also thank our beloved HOD Madam, Ms. Tapashwini Mohali. Without her efforts, the webinar cannot be practically possible. Thank you for her continuous support in motivation. I would further extend my hearty thanks to Mahishwata Pandey Madam, Junior Lecturer in Home Science, Dr. Prasant Pradhan Sar, Junior Lecturer in Political Science, and Dr. Sanjivita Das Madam, Assistant Professor in Chemistry, for their unconditional support and coordination. I would like to show my in-depth gratitude to all the faculty members, participants, and beloved students for active participation. Thank you again for participating in today's webinar. I hope to see you again. Thank you so much. Thank you to organizers. Thank you, Principal Madam. And thanks again. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.